Oh, hey, a big hello to all you guys in today, All Day Land, watching our digital show today in 30. And as always, y'all are looking good. We love that you decided to spend part of your Tuesday with us. Had another busy one in Studio 1A. Let's break it down, what we're bringing you this morning. Yeah, we got big news on COVID booster shots that will impact tens of millions of Americans. The FDA reportedly planning to allow the mixing and matching of doses. So we'll let you know what that'll mean for you and your family. And then Katie Couric returned to Studio 1A to talk about opening up like never before in her new memoir. Plus, and adorable today exclusive we cannot wait for you to meet the so-called tiny mom with the not so tiny twins and they become big sensations oh, on I'm tiktok with those cheeks it's just for starters let us let's get it going time for today, today in 30. 30. first nbc's megan fitzgerald is in chicago with the very latest hey megan good morning Guys, good morning. Yeah, the president of the police union here in Chicago says a third of the police department here has defied the mayor's vaccine mandate order, which means they could lose their job. Meanwhile, federal regulators may be coming up with a new plan to increase the efficacy of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This morning, one step closer to a boost of immunity. The FDA is reportedly expected to approve mixing and matching COVID vaccines. It comes after researchers found antibody levels for Johnson & Johnson recipients increased 76 times 15 days after receiving a Moderna shot. Approval may come as soon as Wednesday, alongside the expected authorization of Moderna and J&J's booster shots. That's according to reports from the New York Times and Washington Post, but not confirmed by NBC News. The government would not recommend one shot over another, and it might note that using the same vaccine as a booster when possible is preferable, according to the New York Times, citing people familiar with the agency's planning. It comes after months of confusion after the Biden administration publicly backed booster shots before they were approved, followed by uncertainty over whether mixing and matching boosters, particularly for those vaccinated with J&J, &J, is advisable. As the battle over those who haven't gotten the vaccine heats up and some high profile fallout in Washington state, which requires employees to get the jab or lose their job. Washington State University announcing overnight it has let go of football team coach Nick Rolovich, along with four of his assistants for not complying with the mandate. Police unions also pushing back, including in Chicago, where the mayor's vaccine mandate has been in effect for three days. But only about 65% of the police force is vaccinated. That means thousands of officers' jobs are on the line. There's too much government control in that. You're going to tell me what I'm going to put in my body. That's my choice. What do you say to the mayor who says that these officers swore an oath to protect the citizens of Chicago? They're not refusing to protect the citizens of Chicago. The city, the department, is refusing to let them protect the citizens of Chicago. And to just underscore the importance of this vaccine, I want to give you some new numbers here. The United States has surpassed 45 million COVID cases. We are looking at more than 750,000 deaths from COVID-19 in this country. Uh, Savannah, sadly, uh, this pandemic is far from over. And we're back with a family that everybody seems to be talking about. Because of the cuteness, oh. Alexis LaRue has become one of the Internet's latest breakout stars. She's known as the tiny mom. <laughs> Thanks to her two adorable, not tiny at all babies, and one of her videos alone has more than 48 million views on TikTok. We're excited because Alexis and those two <laughs> cute bundles who are snoozing Hello. are with us. But before we chat with her and them, here's a little bit more about how they got here. Hello everybody, if you don't know who I am, my name is Alexis, um, and yes, I am the girl who had the video go viral. 22-year-old Minnesota mom Alexis LaRue and her baby girls have become the talk of TikTok. It is not for the week. She posted this viral video September 27th, holding her adorable seven-month-old twins, Camilla and Elena. Each baby weighs 21 pounds, and TikTok fell in love. With that, she's now known as the tiny mom with 48 million views and seemingly just as many questions. I am 115 pounds. I'm about five foot three. Yes, my hands are a little bit big. I don't know how I could edit this video. See, it would be very complicated. The twins were born in March, weighing six pounds, six ounces and six pounds, seven ounces. And since then, they have tripled in size. LaRue and her fiance, Leo, say the kids are simply happy and healthy. The tiny mom and her girls now have more than 700,000 followers and a digital family album delivering an endless loop of smiles. 
And we want to see those uh, smiles. We see moms, the little girls are snoozing. Oh. So sweet, <laughs> Camilla and Elena joining us. Okay, this is cr this is insane. Um, first of all, one of the first things I was thinking is, I want to know what you're feeding those cute babies <laughs> because they went from six pounds, seven ounces to these beautiful children. So tell us. Oh, there they are. Oh. Um, honestly, like they. So they are formula fed and they drink like about six ounces every few hours during the day. Um, and then we've just been feeding them like fruits and veggies. So it's not oh. like a whole lot. Oh, well, they are adorable. adorable. They're so cute. I want to put them on my digital frame just so I can look at their sweet faces. Alexis, how has it been to become a viral sensation? Yeah. Just you put this picture up. It's cute. It's funny. And now everybody knows you guys. It's honestly insane to me because I'm a stay at home mom. And so in my free time, I just did TikTok videos because it was something fun for me to do. And so when I posted the video, the really big one that went viral, I didn't <laughs> think anything of it. Actually, I think I wasn't even going to post it. But then I ended up posting it. And like the next morning I woke up and it just completely blew up. And it was just like I was in such shock. It was crazy. I love that you had to show that this wasn't edited. You're like, I couldn't edit it. Look at we're over here and now we're moving. Is it the positioning of the pictures or because, um, you you know, they are. They're, because they're big. They're, they're big. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people did accuse me of like using a filter, or editing the videos. But no, um, I, I do say that it is the angle that I take the video at that kind of exaggerates their size. But um, it is true. Like, I am very small, and they are relatively <laughs> big babies. So it's not like it's completely fake. But the angle that I take the videos does exaggerate it. Well, they are just so sweet. Oh. I'm also impressed, Alexis, that you can hold both yes. those babies. That's 42 pounds with one arm. I mean, <laughs> you're amazing. Thank you. It's crazy because even, like, carrying groceries, I feel like I can't do it. But then it's like when it comes to my babies, like, when you're a mom, you just find the strength. <laughs> And what about uh, their dad? Like, what does he think about all of this attention? Because you all are, all, the three of you are stars. I think that he's honestly, like, just in as much shock as I am. Just because, like, it really did happen overnight. And I think we still haven't completely, like, accepted it. Like, it's still just, it's so crazy, I think, for both of us. Well, it's really fun. And your babies are just giving a lot of people something to smile about. So thank you for sharing those cuties and tell them to wake up already. Yeah, and we want Ger we want the Gerber people to come calling I because know. it's time. <laughs> um, and if you want to see even more photos and videos of these adorable twins, we'll have them for you at today.com. Uh, I love them. It is time now for our Consumer Confidential. Don't want to scare you, but Halloween is 12 days away. 12 wow. days. My goodness. Spending is expected to reach a new record this year of more than $10 billion. Yeah, and here to help us set up for the safe and spooky Halloween is NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn. Vicki, good morning good to morning. you. Good morning. Look at this. We're standing. We have all these fun props to talk about. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, you know, we did a poll, and I'm, I'm reading our notes here, yeah. that people, nearly 75% of people who were asked say they're going to do trick-or-treating. Right. That's a yeah. great stat, yeah. and we're all excited about that. So. So just tell us, like, what can we do to stay safe? Yeah, Start us count off me among that. So one yeah. of the questions I'm getting is, are kids going to be vaccinated by the time Halloween rolls around, the 5 to 11-year-olds? And the short answer no. is no, no. Sure. because next Tuesday the FDA is meeting. They're going to talk about maybe that Pfizer booster giving it the emergency use authorization. But that won't be in effect for kids at, on Halloween. So what you need to do if you want to be extra careful is consider having your kids wearing a mask if they're going to bunch up as kids do at the front of the door. But the, the good news here is that Halloween is relatively low risk. We are outside. We mm -hmm. know fresh air ventilation is a fantastic place to be and helps lower COVID risk. So I think people should feel good about taking their kids door to door. Just pack the hand sanitizer and do the basic safety things that you remind them of, which is glow sticks, flashlights, and um, making sure parents look at the candy before they eat it. I was going to ask you about that. Who should you travel before with? What should you carry. Yes. I mean, should it be different? You just mentioned hand sanitizer. I didn't even think about that, honestly. Yeah, you know, I mean, we are in flu season as well, so it's just really a good idea. I know that we say, like, don't have the kids eat the candy when they're on the route. That never happens. Obviously, mm -hmm. the kids want to dig they in do. as sure. soon as they do. The other thing I would say is if you are passing out candy, you want to make sure that you do that and keep your hands washed. Don't let kids reach into the bucket. Oh. This is a good year to kind of just keep hand hygiene as a priority. What about those weird things, right? Like, there's, like, some kind of, like, hose things you can throw the candy through some people's yeah. windows? people totally did that last year. Very <laughs> creative ways of being, you know, trying to be contact-free. People put little individual candy bags out on tables, or they made those candy shoots, 
which mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. I think we can relax and go back yeah. to as normal as okay. a Halloween as possible. What's the significance of the blue bucket? So this is really interesting, Alan. It is, I think, going to be a talker and somewhat controversial. You may see kids carrying these blue buckets, and the idea behind it is that will identify a child who may be uh, have autism or maybe uh, have oh, a disability okay. or on the spectrum in some way. Hmm. So maybe you have a lot of lights and you know strobing effects and loud oh, noises yeah. at your house. I didn't know you that. You might want to be considerate. However, there are parents who say, I will make a decision for my children. Please okay. don't identify them with this blue bucket and yeah. expect to kind of other them. Yeah. So, okay. you know, it's going to be individual family preference. Okay. I think. Before we move real quick, if your kid's wearing a mask, they yeah. may still have to wear a mask, right? Yes, and you don't want to have them wearing a mask over a costume mask. There are so many fun little, Why do you like, say that? What do you mean? You know, it could restrict their breathing. Yeah. That's oh, a concern of having, a, okay, okay. you know, mask one of these mask. masks, yeah. like a yeah. fun kid mask, and then another Halloween mask. Got That's it. That's a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about adults? taking precautions safety-wise? Yes, so the hand hygiene, make sure you wash your hands. Mm -hmm. And I would say, if you want to be considerate, because there are a lot of kids who can't get vaccinated, wear a mask when you come to the door. You don't yeah. know who uh, you're going to be sure. answering the door for. So even if you are vaccinated, it's just, you know, a couple hours of passing Common out sense. candy. Yeah. yeah. Giving, yep. And really quickly, we talk, you always talk about saving money. I yes. didn't realize there's a pumpkin shortage. I guess we shouldn't oh be surprised. Gosh. Supply chain everything. issues have affected everything, pumpkins notwithstanding. So something to consider if you're wanting to save money. Check the grocery store. Pumpkin patches are great, and I don't mm. want to discourage people, no. but prices tend to be a little higher because you're paying for the experience, the photos, and that kind of thing. The other thing is faux pumpkins are really fun, and you can have them year after year if you can find some. Or you can even put a glow stick or a candle in a jar and, and kind of celebrate that way. As far as costumes go, I love this idea shopping your own closet hand me downs sure. and also talking to your neighbors about costume swapping that's mm -hmm. something we can do because oh. some costumes are hard to find this year or search the internet for clever ideas for example this year my daughter is actually going to wear a squid hat and carry a monopoly board uh, squid, squid game. game. Yeah. Yeah. I love those costumes. Yeah. And that's so that's easy. Nice. Because right. the squid hat was like $5, and we have a Monopoly game at home. So that's cute. there are lots really of word plays and fun things you can do that are I forgot your family goes all out for the <laughs> But there you go, you. individual candy bags. Thank you for you wrapping the, the bag. Size. That's Thank you. Individual bag. Thank you, Another Al. great idea. This yeah. is not an Al awesome. Roker there because and your hands are fun size. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Big one. That's right. Vicki Wynn, thanks as always for these tips and more. Check out on all the advice on our website at today.com slash Halloween. Katie Couric back in Studio 1A. How does it feel? It feels funny and great and so many wonderful memories here and a lot of old friends still here. Um, so it's fun to reconnect with them and uh, wish I could go to the control room and terrorize them, which was kind of my MO back in the day. Uh, but it's just been really, really fun. And, uh, you know, I think Thomas Wolfe was wrong. You can go home again. <laughs> You certainly can. Do you feel like a lot has changed or the bones are the same? I feel like the bones are the same, you know, and it's so fun. I was saying to one of my friends here, it, you know, the world is changing so quickly and there's something reassuring about having a constant like the Today Show, you know, an institution that's been around for a very long time. So. I think that's comforting in a funny way. And I'm also really proud of everyone who, you know, I think people don't realize this is exhausting. You know, day in and day out, getting up this early, having, you know, juggling so many balls. And it's, it's fun to see everyone really thrive in this environment and kill it every day. For 15 years, Katie Kirk was a fixture here at Today before moving on to CBS, where she made TV history. She became the first female solo anchor to host an evening broadcast. And now, after 40 years as a journalist, hard to Thanks, believe Jenna. Katie is putting it all on the table. On a very candid memoir, it's called Going There. Katie, well, Oda. first of all, it's a big day. I mean, your book is is out. Well, no, it comes out comes next out. Tuesday. It comes out next yes, Tuesday. But, okay. Yes, but yes. Well, we can pre-order. Yes, you can. Interested. Thank yeah. you, Jenna. So we're in this moment where um, I just know tons of people, they always say, I grew up watching you, I know you. And I think everyone who watched you was like, I want to be Katie's best friend. She's witty, she's smart. Wouldn't she be cool if we were pals? What you're doing in this book is you're pulling back that veneer and you're showing the raw side. Yeah. And I was just curious, like, how come? Like, why did you want to expose yourself to that part? Well, you know, I think a memoir is a look at a life through the narrator's, you know, narrator's point of view. Yeah. And I, I wanted to, I mean, I think I've been pretty authentic and direct and real my whole life. Um, 
And I think I just wanted to kind of tell the real story, pull the curtain back, mm -hmm. what was going on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. how it felt, um, you know, experiences I had undergone, what it was like to have a husband be diagnosed with terminal cancer at 41 years old with two little girls, um, how we dealt with that. You know, I think my life has encompassed so many different things. And I think there are so many lessons mm -hmm. about persistence. You know, nobody wanted to, me to be successful in this business. And I was just mm -hmm. like working my ass off in local <laughs> news, am I allowed to say yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> in, in local news. And, you know, there were a lot of naysayers mm -hmm. and people who said, you know, you'll never make mm -hmm. it in this business. So I think it's about persistence. I think a lot of it is about uh, resilience, mm -hmm. you know, about being knocked down and being able to get up again and learn and grow from your experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it is also about taking this incredible period of history, when you think mm -hmm. about it, when you mentioned, Jenna, I've been a journalist for 40 years, and taking a look back at how we covered stories mm -hmm. or attitudes that existed early in my career that have undergone a much needed and major transformation yeah. when it comes to, you know, gay Americans, when it comes to gender politics, when it comes to issues of, of racial justice. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I was really interested, because I love history, mm -hmm in using that as a backdrop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are the filters for a lot of this information, and we reflect it back to the American mm -hmm. public. And how, how have my attitudes and, and um, changed, and how have I evolved yeah. as a person, mm -hmm. which I think is really... Hard to do. And it's you, hard to and do, you but, it. And but, but worthy, yeah. don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, I mean, it is, and it's important. And I think, you know, one of the things that you write multiple times, I mean, it's dedicated to mm -hmm. your girls. Mm -hmm. You call it a manifesto for women. Mm -hmm. You know, there's women in this room that you have mm -hmm. helped mm -hmm. along the way. But some of the women that you write about, and even just, you know, what was taken from it, said that your words hurt them. Mm -hmm. Now do you think, God, why did I put in mm -hmm. that one sentence? Well, you know what? I think that if you read it in total, um, you yeah, know, we it, read it in total. You know, I, but I think, yeah. uh, you know, like I said, as I said earlier, so many nice things, yeah. you know, and I, it, at some point you want to reflect what was happening at the mm -hmm. time, you know. I think Deborah Norville is one of the kindest, most gracious yeah, people, she and she handled this incredible situation, which I say was no fault of her own, being mm -hmm. portrayed as a home wrecker. And mm -hmm. at the time, I went back and read articles, and people felt, you know, some viewers after Jane, and they were mm -hmm. very protective of Jane, you know, because these parasocial yeah. relationships that form mm -hmm. with viewers and people on television, that that they they didn't respond well to Deborah. That was no criticism mm -hmm. of Deborah, it was about what mm -hmm. the situation was at the time. So, mm -hmm. you know. So, but when she says her feelings mm -hmm. hurt, do you feel like you have to reach out and say well, sorry? I think, or how mm -hmm. does that work I think in this I, world? I think I'm going to send her a book and say I'm so mm -hmm. happy for you to read the whole yeah. book and put my observations into context. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of it, it's about clickbait. And, you know, the other thing I talk about extensively, and I think it's so interesting because so much of this book is kind of navigating a male-dominated culture. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah business for so long and yet the narrative that some of the the more salacious publications pick up on because I guess sadly it still sells right. is this cat fight narrative yeah. mm -hmm. you know and I laugh about how Diane and I competed for big yeah. interviews mm -hmm. I thought it was so funny and mm -hmm. ludicrous I mean the way it used to be and Hoda you know what it was like I was here during that time right yeah but do you think because I I mean you talk about like kind of you are territorial about your turf yeah you didn't want someone to come in and take your chair. Yeah. Is that how you experienced your time here? Is that how you viewed Not it? really. I mean, I don't think it was like a daily thing. Right. I just think that uh, occasionally yeah. I would feel territorial. Yeah. But I think I was incredibly generous with yeah. my colleagues. I just think, you know, listen, I think it's true. I think anybody in these positions sometimes feels like especially when there's only one, you yeah. know, very yeah. few, yeah. like, oh gosh. And especially when mm -hmm. you consider that for no reason, Jane was just kind yeah. of unceremoniously uh, ceremoniously pushed out. Yeah. So I think it's a natural human impulse. And I, I, I thought it was brave for me to say sometimes I felt protective. Yeah, or insecure yeah. about it. Yeah. You talked to a lot about body image, which yeah. I found interesting. And when you first got the job at CBS, you took a picture. Oh 
And then you well, this, you, yeah. And, and this is it. the picture that How was taken. How embarrassing is that? And that was the one that they airbrushed and kind well, of yeah, tried to make you, made I, you I, was, I was on the Photoshop diet, apparently. You know, I was doing something for CBS. They took a picture, and then they have an internal publication called Watch. And I didn't even see the photo, but somebody, uh, a newspaper noticed that they had shaved like 20 pounds what? off yeah. me. And I was like, who did that? They didn't ask permission. And as somebody who s struggled with yes, bulimia early say, on, you write a lot had, about that, and has you know body image issues, not so much today as I did. Yeah. I was so mortified. Yeah. You know, but I, you know, listen, that's really embarrassing. But I put it in the book. Put I put a there. lot of you embarrassing You were really, stuff really in honest. <laughs> so can I ask, when Mary Smith goes to Barnes and Noble and picks up your book and reads it cover to cover, what are you hoping? that she takes like what what was your your point when you put it out there into the world I mean first of all I think I've had a really interesting yeah. life I don't know if other people will think it but I've just you know I'm a kid growing up in Arlington Virginia <laughs> like mm -hmm. how did this happen <laughs> yeah. first of all it's really strange even yeah. as I sit here today so I think kind of like sticking to sticking to your dreams yeah. being intentional like yeah. I was always very goal-oriented both yeah. professionally and then when I turned 30 I was like I better get married yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna find a nice husband yeah. and I kind of really treated it almost as if I was looking for a job mm -hmm. um, I think about as I mentioned persistence mm -hmm. and I think people will get different things out of it you mm -hmm. know I think young women may be inspired by the fact that nobody kind of said hey mm -hmm. we think you have a lot of potential mm -hmm. I had to like get in there and mm -hmm. be scrappy and work right. my butt off mm -hmm. and I think you know for people who are suffering from loss mm -hmm. and and you know had to deal with a spouse or mm -hmm. a loved one with a terminal illness I still I still wish I knew yeah. how to handle that like better. Like you'll never have the conversation yeah. I, you know, you're, you're going to die. And mm -hmm. how do you have that mm -hmm. conversation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th I did a lot of soul searching about, did I handle that right? Did I, you know, I think there's a line in the book where I said, I did everything I could to help Jay live. Yeah. I wish I had done a better job helping him die. Hmm. You know, and so... Can I, what do you think he would think? I mean, you really... I don't know. I think about it because, yeah. you know, I write a lot about... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. some of his hobbies mm -hmm. that my daughters have struggled with. He was really fascinated by the Civil War, mm -hmm. and Ellie and Carrie are, have been trying to square that and understand it. Um, you know, listen, I hope Jay would be proud of me. I know he would be proud of all the work I've done with colon cancer mm -hmm. because, you know, I've been able to help people, you know, mm -hmm. take active measures to save their lives. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's the Jay and the girls. <laughs> but, um, you know, I wonder, I wonder what my dad would think, yeah. Jenna. I wonder yeah. what my mom would think, you know. Um, it's, it's hard to be vulnerable. You know, I think, you know, Brene Brown encourages us all mm -hmm. to be vulnerable. But once you are, you're like, holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, pretty, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty <laughs> vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but I can't imagine writing a book and not really being honest about my experiences. I mean, what is the point? By so you way, have something in your library? I don't know. One thing you've always been since I've known you is honest. You've always told and the truth. And very direct, and right? Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> yes. I remember. Direct, direct, direct. But you have always been that way, and this book is that, too. Yeah. yeah. Katie, thank, thank you, you Katie. for being oh, well, with us. Well, thank you guys thank for you. having me. By the way, I left you. out any questions about my family. Oh, yeah. You can take that up with my dad. <laughs> That's a separate thing. That's a different political interview. Yes. We, we won't right. go there today. But Katie's book is called Going There. It's out October 20th. And her mom is in and her mom They sure are. <laughs> They've been talking about it. Got another big one for you tomorrow. Olivia Newton-John will be along to celebrate a special anniversary with us. And Lydia Bastianich is here to share some Italian favorites from her new cookbook. So make sure to tune in tomorrow on today. Have a great Tuesday.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.